Today we're going to review counting atoms in chemical formulas that have coefficients and subscripts. Let us begin by counting the number of atoms found in the chemical formula for acetic acid. The formula for acetic acid is CH3COOH. To begin, we'll start by counting our carbon atoms, or the capital C's. In this formula, there is going to be two carbon atoms, and we can tell this by counting the number of C's present. Next, we have the H's for hydrogen. We have one hydrogen at the end of the formula, but we also have an H with a three subscript. The subscript is going to tell us the number of hydrogen atoms present. So we have the subscript three, plus the additional one hydrogen atom at the end of the formula, which is going to give us a total of four hydrogen atoms. Finally, we have our oxygen, or O atoms, and there are going to be a total of one, two oxygen atoms in this chemical formula. Finally, we just have to add these together. Two plus four plus two is going to give us a total of eight atoms in the formula for CH3COOH. In our next example, we'll be using subscripts and coefficients in order to count the number of atoms present in a chemical formula. In this example, we have four CH4. The four at the front of the chemical formula is going to be a coefficient. The coefficient tells us the number of molecules that are going to be present. In order to count the atoms, we will need to distribute the four to everything that follows in the formula. Taking carbon, carbon does not have a subscript or small number following it, so we are going to assign it an invisible one. In order to count the number of carbon atoms, we need to multiply the subscript by the coefficient. In this case, we have four times one is going to give us a total of four carbon atoms. Next, we will do hydrogen. Hydrogen has a, a subscript of four, so we need to multiply that by a coefficient. So four times four is going to give us a total of 16 hydrogen atoms. Our last step is to add them together. Four carbon atoms plus 16 hydrogen atoms will give us a total of 20 atoms in the formula for full CH4. Lastly today, we're going to go over the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass says that during a chemical reaction, we should start and end with the same amount. That means the number of reactants and products should be equal. Let's take for example, the reaction involving hydrogen and oxygen in order to produce water, or H2O. The reactants in this case are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. That is going to produce or yield two H's and an O. If the amount of reactants and products is equal to one another, that means that we did follow the law of conservation of mass and we have a balanced chemical equation. Now let's examine this formula to see that if it follows the law of conservation of mass. In the formula, we have H2O yields H2 plus O2. In order to see if the formula follows the law of conservation of mass, we need to start by counting the number of atoms in the reactants and products sides of the chemical equation. On our reactant side, we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. On our product side of the equation, we have two hydrogen atoms and also two oxygen atoms. Now the law of conservation of mass again says that whatever we begin a chemical equation or chemical formula with, we should also end with. Comparing our hydrogen and oxygen atoms, we see that the number of hydrogen atoms is the same on both sides of the chemical equation. However, when we come down to oxygen, we see that the number of oxygen atoms is not equal on both sides. The products have an additional atom added to them. So in this example, we did not follow the law of conservation of mass and the formula is not balanced. 